Hey guys, it's Oz from Postmortem Radio. Just wanted to do a quick uh, little video for you guys. Um, today, uh, the Halloween Kills um, extended cut uh, came out on uh, on streaming. Um, so in case a lot of you guys are wondering if it's worth it, should I wait for the, for the uh, Blu-ray or whatever to come out. Um, so I actually just got done watching it earlier tonight. And I gotta say there, there's, uh, it's about 80% the same thing that we saw in the theaters. It's got about four minutes of additional footage. Um, so I'm gonna go through a real brief uh, breakdown of uh, what was, uh, what we, what's in the extended cut that we didn't see in the, uh, in the theaters. The first thing that you see a, a few minutes into the film which was really exciting is, and what most people really loved about the film was one of my favorite parts was the flashback scene. First thing that you really notice uh, on the extended, extended uh, cut of the film is uh, the Lonnie Elam's interaction with Michael. Um, after, he, uh, after he gets done getting uh, the shit kicked out of him by the, the Mulaney's, there's another scene besides him just running away uh, before Michael walks up on him. Uh, and it's it really is kind of cool. It's really creepy and it's it's really Cool to, and it pays a little bit of homage back to the original 78 film because he's walking down the street and He sees Michael standing Behind a bush sort of like he did when Lori and the girls and were walking home from school and Lori sees him behind the bush and he steps steps back after she sees him um Pretty similar to that. Um, he, the only thing that's kind of that's kind of goofy though, um, is that when he steps behind, unlike in the '78 film, when he steps behind the bushes, um, you can you can down at the bottom of the you can you can see his feet. Uh, you can see his feet um, still moving back. So it's kind of like it's kind of hard for you to understand how he disappears um, because. Basically, there's a bush, and then there's a house, and he basically walks towards the house. It's a little tiny corner, and, and Lonnie walks up, and then he's gone. So he's kind of like disappeared, um, which really was really kind of cool. Um, I loved it. Um, aside from the the, maybe that's why they cut it out of the film. I don't know, um, but uh, you know, you can still you can, if you check it out, you can definitely see his his, his feet um, after he walks behind the bush. Um, um, other than that, um, next, I, uh, next thing you noticed was, um, the fire, the fire scene with the, uh, firefighters, uh, a little bit more extended footage, um, with them actually fighting the fire. Um, not a whole lot, but there's a few more minutes before the firefighter falls through, uh, before the, the floor collapses. Um, and then, you know, Michael rolls up the the gate and uh he gets it on um but uh there's a there's a couple of extra couple of extra scenes um i think michael hits him a couple more times with the halligan in the face um there's another another uh a scene for when the firefighters reaching down um reaching for him telling him to, to grab his hand trying to rescue his buddy um so a little bit of that um next part that was a completely deleted scene is Karen at the hospital. Uh, once Lord, once they get Lori to the hospital, there's a scene where um, where Karen actually goes into the morgue uh, looking for Ray, her husband. Um, which um, it's kind of a goofy, I mean, scene because I don't know what. I mean, there's a big. <laughs> big dude naked dude just slab on laying on a slab with his junk all hanging out um it's not certain because we saw that in the original uh and in, in, the, in the regular cut i don't know what's going on at haddonfield memorial why they just got people um in the morgue laying out without you know uncovered and everything um doesn't seem cool to me but uh whatever but uh and then there's this really kind of creepy guy um that that's in there telling her that she can't be in there or whatever. Um, I don't know, it had, had a little bit of a creepy aspect to it. Um, maybe a little crypt keeper kind of thing. I mean, it, it just see it's it did seem a little out of place. Um, at least he did, and the way he 
he acted, the, I mean, he kind of yells at her, you, you can't be in here or whatever. Um, but I mean, I kind of liked it uh, that, you know, it showed a little bit more depth. I mean, she's, she's up actually, she's like trying to maybe, you know, have that closure, you know, to see, you know, her, her husband, because uh, we see in the regular cut when she's washing her hands and, and her ring and she kind of breaks down a little bit um, when she realized, you know, when it's kind of all kind of hitting her what all she's lost uh, going through the film. Um, it, it's it's kind of, you know, you kind of feel the gravity of, of what's what's going on. Um, there's an, And then there's a, a little bit more footage um, when she goes in and meets Allison in the hallway. Um, she kind of walks, walks in there and uh, is kind of consoling her. There's a little bit, you know, most of the scenes are extended scenes. Uh, there's really only a few um, deleted scenes that were um, in, in the cut. Because like I said, it's only it's really only combined an extra four minutes. Um, the next the next thing that's really noticeable, um, I was kind of hoping that there would be some more there with the kids. Uh, when Lindsay and, and the, um, the nurse and the doctor couple and then uh, Nurse Marion pulled up on those kids. So I was kind of hoping there would be a little bit more to that. Um, but unfortunately there wasn't. I, I thought maybe there'd be something missing from when um, the nurse climbed out of the, the, the car because there's a break in, in time there where she's kind of like gone where Michael's basically killing everybody else and then she conveniently waits until she he kills her husband and everybody and then she decides to show up and start filling you know the, the car full of bullets. Um, so I thought maybe there'd be something there that would have filled in the gaps but unfortunately not. Um, but the next thing we see, we see, um, we get to, um, uh, little John and big John's house. And, um, once, uh, the second time when, when Michael's actually there and this is the first real kill where you, um, expected, you know, maybe some things that got cut out and, uh, you know, some of these, some of these brutal kills that, uh, would be more more graphic in the extended cut and this is for sure when big john gets killed i mean first of all he get he gets it in the armpit which is bad enough but when he when he when michael puts his thumbs into his eye sockets and basically raping his eye sockets i mean it was it was bad enough in the original cut but in this film i mean you literally i mean it is so gnarly that you you literally see Big John's eyes popping out of his skull, and just I mean it's just it's it's it was it was pretty gruesome, really gruesome. Um, so that's that's in there. Um, really, there wasn't anything else uh, added uh, for the um, the escape mental patient. I thought maybe there would be something in there with that. Thankfully, there really wasn't because that's the one part of the movie that I really didn't think was necessary um, and really didn't make sense that uh, Tommy's trying to say that he doesn't know what Michael looks like when earlier in the film he's looking at the TV and shows both pictures of both patients, one of them being Michael, and his line of, you know, he has, he, he's, he's always worn a mask. How do we know, Lee? Well... I don't think he's worn a mask in 40 years. So, but um, the next part that we really see some uh, is uh, when when the uh, when the when the when the mob takes on Michael. Um, I I had I was kind of disappointed because I thought maybe there'd be some more there with with Cameron because Cameron's death was really really graphic and man you you really feel it because. While the guy was a douche in the first in the first film, you kind of feel like at least in, at least I did in this one. He felt like he kind of redeemed himself and was really trying to be there for 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 Allison um, and protect her. Um, and his death was a tough one to watch. I, I expected it to be a little bit worse, but there really wasn't anything added for that um, in the extended cut. Um, but with the uh, when she when she basically ambushes Michael, um, when she hits him with the pitchfork, there's a little, there's a little bit, that's an extended a little bit. I think there's a few extra seconds there because it, it seemed like, um, it was a little bit longer in the extended cut than it was in the, 
um, in the uh, in the regular cut. Now, when the mob starts attacking him, um, there's there's a few there's a little bit more there, um, a little bit more. I was I was kind of hoping that the the woman that had the iron that has been kind of labeled the Haddonfield iron the Iron Maiden of Haddonfield. Um, I kind of was hoping that maybe there'd be something that got cut, like maybe she got a good lick in there with that iron or something, or maybe she was kind of whipping around with the cord and like maybe smacking from a distance with the, cause that would be kind of funny. Uh, but no, no such luck on that. Uh, but, uh, most of, most of the extended time for, for that was Michael just messing, messing those people up. Um, there's one kill that I didn't notice specifically in the extended cut but I or in the original cut but in the extended cut I did there's a scene where it looks like he's holding he's got a hold of a guy's head and just just brams a, a, his knife right into the side of his skull into his temple or something like that and I didn't remember seeing that in the in the regular cut but uh, in the extended cut it's definitely there um and then what uh what I had always heard was the original ending it's really not an alternate ending it's not the ending is the exact same um but the ending it it it, it goes on a little bit longer than the regular regular cut did so there is a part where after karen gets killed uh or the way we think it gets killed we don't know for sure but her phone rings and we actually you hear it vibrate it's like on silence and you hear it vibrate and i guess michael's aware of uh cell phones and technology enough that he knows what it is um so he picks it up and then it cuts to Lori, and she's at the hospital i guess trying to call obviously trying to call karen and she hears michael breathing and apparently realizes what has just transpired and simply says michael i'm coming for you and then drops basically mike drops it and the the the, the phone's just kind of like hanging there and which is kind of goofy and you still we can still hear michael breathing um so that's pretty much the that's pretty much the most of the rundown now there the one other thing that i did notice and i think is going to add to a lot of the people out there who are subscribing to the theory that because David Gordon Green says that Halloween Ends is going to be very Christine-esque. There's that rumor out there that a lot of people are, going to, are thinking that Karen's not really dead and that she's going to be possessed by Michael's evil. And that it's really, especially since it's going to be a four-year time jump, that somehow she's going to be the one behind the mask. Or there's also the rumor that Lori's the one behind the mask. And there's the rumor that it's a dream. But, you know... I hope it really that they don't turn it into a Dallas episode and that it all ends up a dream because then it'll seem like we've all really been robbed. But um, in this in this extended cut, there is a there is a little bit of extra footage where um, Hawkins is explaining how Michael used to was how he may not have been looking out but may have been looking in. There's a little, it's a little bit longer. They show it a little bit in the, in the regular cut, but it's a little bit longer um, where you see Karen doing the same thing that apparently Michael had did, like she's understanding. So I can see how people might subscribe to that theory that since she started doing that and then she saw Michael in the window and, you know, and all this, these other things, um, that perhaps she is what they're referring to as far as being possessed. Um, I hope it doesn't go, go that way. Um, but I could certainly understand. I could certainly understand people kind of interpreting it that way. So that's, that's my rundown. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you think. Um, is it worth the extra 20 bucks? I mean, if you're a hardcore Halloween fan and you know, if you dig Halloween Kills, like I do, um, my re my only recommendation would be do your research and find out which streaming which which retailer is streaming it where you get the actual um, access to the bonus features as well as just I I jumped the gun and bought it on Vudu 
and paid the 20 bucks and all you get is the extended cut. You don't get the gag reel, you don't get you know the feature X, you don't get the commentaries or any of that other stuff. Um, so that would be my my recommendation. Is it, it would be, I think it would be worth the 20 bucks if you if I got access to that. Is it worth the 20 bucks for the extended cut? Maybe if you're a hardcore fan, like I said, and you want to see, uh, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. Um, me personally, I, I, I feel like it kind of got robbed. I think they should be up front and let you know up front, hey, whether you're going to get access to the bonus features or not. Because um, they list them out there. But anyway, let me know what you think. In your comments down below, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Post Morning Radio. We'll be back.